Hey guys, Dr. Rebecca Warren here from DrsWarren.com and the Wellness Radio on Talk 102.3. So today I wanted to come on um, because I had a couple consults today where I got frustrated. I got frustrated because I've heard this today and I've heard it multiple times that people will go to their doctor, they don't feel well, they're feeling exhausted, um, they're weight loss resistant or they're gaining weight, their mind is foggy, just everything just feels off. And they go to the doctor after actually watching one of our videos, one of my videos, I'm getting my ebook. And if you guys want that ebook, it's on doctorswarren.com under thyroid. They read about it, they watch what I say, they go to their doctor and their doctor says, no, you don't need that. And the doctor doesn't have anything to offer them. They say no to the labs. And you know, these women, men and women leave there wondering why is it that I still don't feel well or things aren't balanced. So this is my goal. When I'm making content, my goal is that you feel so educated and empowered that you can hear an answer like that and be like, nope, not okay. I'm either gonna find a practitioner that's gonna listen to me that is going to work with me um, and not bring ego or whatever it may be, whether it is that they have outdated information, they don't have the time um, to understand why you need these labs, whatever it may be, I hope that this information um, is able to open, ha- allow you to feel comfortable to open up the conversation with your doctor to see if they'll listen to you and hear you out. And if they won't, and they and I hear this a lot, they shut you out, then it's time to find someone out there that's willing to work with you. And let me go ahead and tell you this. Before I became a doctor, I was a patient. I had to do this, and it is possible. And I thank the Lord every single day that I drew a line in the sand and I said, hey, my thyroid got cut out. I need to take control of my health because I don't feel well. So here we go. Let's go ahead and try to explain why these labs are really important, especially to get complete labs. So the one lab that everyone always knows is TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. That's kind of like the gold standard right now within medicine. Doctors will look at this and say, well, this looks good, this looks bad. Uh, But I'm gonna show you guys why that alone is not gonna be enough to figure out what's going on with your body and what's going on with your hormones. So TSH actually comes from the pituitary. So usually when I do a thyroid talk, I have people say, say pituitary with me. So if you're at home, say pituitary. (laughs) But the pituitary gland is actually in the brain uh, brain stem. So the hypothalamus is in the the brain. It kind of looks around, it releases thyroid releasing hormone, then it talks to the pituitary and says, hey, we need some more thyroid hormone. So TSH is a pituitary hormone. So it works with this negative feedback. If it, everything is kind of uh, good, if, every, if you're stressed, it'll go up because you need more thyroid. If it's not, um, it'll go back down into more of a normal number. But TSH is a pituitary hormone. So what happens is it comes from the brainstem and no judging on the drawing. I'm not an artist, I'm a doctor. So it goes down from the brainstem and TSH goes to the thyroid, knocks on the thyroid door and it says, hey, um, it's time to produce some hormones. So you're gonna produce something called T4. In fact, you're gonna produce, I'm just gonna put T4 here. You actually produce a little bit of T1 and T2 naturally. Um, Don't worry about that, but I'm just letting you know everything your thyroid actually makes. And it produces some T3, because your body's so intelligent. It says, hey, I'm gonna make some T4, and for quicker use, uh, I'm gonna produce some T3 as well, which is why there's a lot of people that feel better on natural desiccated thyroid hormone, instead of just uh, T4, like, uh, what is it, Synthroid or level thyroxine. So you release T4, oh, T4 from the thyroid. Let me go ahead and tell you this. The most important lab to have is free T4. You want to know what's unbound. It is no good to you if it's bound. It's taken up by something. You want it to be free. So I've seen total T4 um, as people that have gotten that done for years and are still feeling bad. Free T4 is unbound, it's gonna be available. So you want to look at that because what you're looking at is what do I have right now that's gonna help me um, with my cells, it's gonna help uh, produce ATP, what's gonna help me lose weight, feel great, unbound. So free T4 gets released from the thyroid and it has to be converted, all right? Free T4 on its own isn't gonna uh, connect to your cell receptors, meaning it has to be 
One way to think about it is it has to be switched. It has to be turned on. How does it become that? By getting converted to free T3. It does that. A majority of that happens in the liver, okay? So it goes to the liver and it comes out as free T3 in the digestive system, okay? With the people that I coach, how many people do you think that have been hypo for a period of time or if their thyroid has gone dysfunctional, how many people do you think have a healthy liver? Uh, toxins, medications, beauty products, water. I mean, how many of them do you think have a healthy liver? I'm gonna tell you, not very many. They have a sluggish liver, it's kind of like overwhelmed. And how many people do you think when they've gone hypo with their thyroid or if their thyroid is off, how many people do you think have a healthy digestive system? Not very many. I'm doing stool tests, GI mats on them, and I'm seeing that their gut microbiome is a mess. So what I want you to understand is that when a doctor is just looking at free T4, what they're expecting is that your liver and your digestive system is doing its job. But when people come in here, one of the first thing they say is like, oh, I have acid reflux or I have constipation or I have diarrhea, which are all red flags. That something's not right. Everyone's now getting diagnosed with fatty liver. It's like I had multiple women from our home on talk. Yeah, my doctor said I had fatty liver, uh, blood sugars out of control. We have all these red flags that our digestive system and our liver is not well. In fact, you probably tell that to your doctor, hey, I'm having some gut issues and they might say, yeah, go see a GI specialist, but they don't put two and two together that that T4 is dependent on these healthy systems in order to be activated. Once it becomes free T3, that goes to the cell receptors, it connects there and you have healthy cells. Now, do we have another marker, a different color? Um, so let me go ahead and tell you this. Why is iodine like a big thing that people hear about? And they're like, oh, maybe I should do iodine or should I not do iodine? Well, iodine is needed. I'll put this right up here. Iodine is needed to make free T4. It's actually four iodine molecules that's kind of breaking down and used to make your thyroid hormone. And this three here is like that three iodine molecule. So what does this mean? Is that iodine is necessary to make thyroid hormones, but research says in the last six, 50 to 60 years, our consumption of iodine has gone down uh, by 50% because we were told that salt was bad for us. Side note, table salt, absolutely horrible for you, but rich minerals are found in things like Himalayan pink salt and sea salt. So just a side note there for you guys. So what happens is that for the last you know, 50, 60 years, our iodine consumption has gone down. And if we do eat salt, it's depleted of really great nutrients. And so that means that we don't have this iodine, enough iodine to make your thyroid hormones. So not only do we not have enough iodine, but then things that look like iodine will compete with iodine. So what are those things? Fluoride, chlorine, bromine. My favorite question is, where do you think you get most of your fluoride and chlorine from? Your water, you bathe in it, you drink it, you wash your stuff in it, it's toxic. And then you go to your dentist and like put fluoride in your mouth. That's just gonna cause some serious issues with your thyroid. And then the final thing, the final two things we're gonna talk about is that when your free T4 goes to your liver, it does this natural thing of, uh, of uh, producing reverse T3. Reverse T3 is kind of like, this um, inactivated, so instead of making free T3, it'll take some and make reverse T3, which is great if your body's under stress, but reverse T3 is kind of like a, a pool for future use, just in case, it's a reservoir. But what happens when your body's stressed, if you're low in iron, if you're chronically sick, what your body can start to do is it can start increasing, so it'll decrease your production of free T3 it'll increase your production of reverse T3. Why does this matter? And most doctors don't test for this. Because in the blood, in your body, if you have more reverse T3 than free T3, it will compete with free T3. Look at this new color. It will compete with free T3 to go to the cell. It'll win out if you have more of it in your body. So if you're not producing enough free T3, it's not getting activated. And then you're also making a lot of reverse T3. It'll connect to that cell and it will be like a key that fits but won't turn. It doesn't allow you to feel good. It doesn't give you all the great benefits of having adequate levels of free T3, which is why free, uh, reverse T3 is important. And the last two thing is TPO antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. So I'm gonna put this over here because you can decrease these numbers by changing and healing your gut, working on your hypothalamus and your pituitary axis. So 
thyroid antibodies are TPO antibodies, thyroid globulin antibodies are things that are going to go up here and attack the thyroid. So I have someone whose TSH has been going like this since like the spring, just up and down, up and down. And the doctor will not look at her thyroid antibodies. Why wouldn't a doctor want to know if there's an active autoimmune reaction, especially when you are able to bring down those numbers? So TPO antibodies, thyroid globulin antibodies are important. So I can't believe I did it. I did it in like almost under 10 minutes. I did do a longer intro, but this is so important. Look at this. Like, this is crazy that all doctors will do sometimes is look at your thyroid stimulating hormone. No wonder so many people don't feel well. No wonder there aren't people um, that are able to do something about their thyroid before it gets too bad. So if you guys want my uh, Thyroid Optimal Labs ebook, go to doctorswarn.com. You can do black backslash thyroid or just go to our website. You can see the thyroid right there. Put in your email. You'll get that ebook. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Comment on here and share because you never know how far reaching this information could be for someone.